What's up, guys? This is the Bowl and Sound Productions podcast. And uh, today with me on the show is a good buddy of mine, Jonesin. Yeah! What up, though, man? <laughs> Thanks for having me, dog. It was good. Absolutely, man. So I'm really stoked to have you on, man. Uh, I've been seeing what you've been doing the last couple of years of your career, and I'm really stoked to just, um, you know, talk some things out. I feel like, you, you know, you and I really go after uh, our careers with uh, DIY at the front of everything. Yeah, man. I mean, if if you're not if you're not gonna do it, no one else is, bro. So like, you know, you gotta, uh, yeah, man, DIY all day. And I, I keep that DIY, even though I mean, I have a record deal and a good manager and a label that that really supports me well, man. But there's no reason to like rest on your laurels. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was like we were saying and we were talking like. Uh, Nobody's going to be as excited about this as you are, and that's why it's really important to bring all that passion that we you know I feel like we both bring to our careers to bring it to that next level. Passion, man, all day. Yeah, if you if you're not loving what you do, man, you're gonna half-ass it, bro. You yeah. know what I mean. So if you if you don't love it, don't do it. Otherwise, people are gonna tell. You know what I mean? Yeah. For for everyone who doesn't know, Chris Jones is a hip hop artist, and uh, he's got a couple a couple albums out right now. Uh, you can check him out on iTunes, Spotify. Google Play, all the usual outlets, right? Yeah, man. You name it, it's out there. You know, you can buy it. You could probably steal it from a hundred places <laughs> yeah. too, man. You know, and we can listen on your website too. Yeah, on the website. Yeah, yeah. What's your website? You can, there's actually two. Um, Jonesandmusic.com is like the uh, official official, and then I also have Jonesand.net um, where I host like some free downloads and just other stuff. Cool. It's that landing page for that DIY marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what Jones and .net is. Cool. So it's kind of like your one page. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, right, yeah cool. exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, Jones is another guy like myself where, um, you know, we both record our own music. And um, I always like meeting and talking with other people like that that do that because, I mean, I feel like we like when you record your own music and like, you know, you're mixing and everything and you're doing that, like you really got to have the whole end vision um, intact when you go into it. And like, I feel like, you know, uh, Jonesen's on that level with me where like kind of when we're going into it, like we already know what it's going to sound like in the end result in our head. And if we can get it to sound better than that, then we're accomplishing something really special. Mm, yeah, man, I um, Yeah, yes, I agree <laughs> that uh, I try and I try and yeah have a picture of like what the song's gonna be before it, I start it. You know what I mean? From like before a beat even exists. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I have an idea, and it's like I hear that whole that whole like song, right? Like mm-hmm. how's it sound? How's the mix? How's what's the hook like? The boom, boom, boom. And then when you get in the studio, you know, and then you got to bring it to life. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. As far as bringing it to life, I mean, one of my main things is when I ask myself the checklist of things like, as far as this, am I bringing this to life in the right way? Um, two things I ask myself is, is this visual? Like when I hear it, am I visualizing things in my head when I hear it? Mm-hmm. If if not, I need to go back and change some things. Most likely in the mix or the production. And then uh, uh, I'm blanking out in two right now. <laughs> I usually have like two things that I usually do, but uh, oh, is it making me feel something? Am I feeling yeah. an emotion from this? And that's one of the biggest things because if you're not feeling an emotion from it, most likely somebody else listening to it isn't. Uh, true enough, man. Uh, I think emotion is is huge, you know. And I feel like people, when you hear the word, like someone talk about, does it make you feel something? Like it doesn't have mm-hmm. to be like, oh my god, this song made me remember when my fucking dog died. Like it's not, it doesn't have to be like sad or like this. That can be like, oh damn, that's fucking tight. You know yeah. what I mean? Like a fun, like uh, yeah. So uh, definitely got to feel that shit, man. When you're in there, if you're not, and I dude, I'll scrap songs all day. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'll finish the song and be like, nah. Nope, not good enough. You know what I mean? Well, that's a funny thing. Like, see, I've never been one of those kind of people who like, well, no? yeah, like, like all, 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 um, because when I write, I record at the same time. Uh, I kind of do that too. Yeah, like yeah. I, I won't just like write something and be like, oh, it's not even good enough to record. Like, I just write and then record. That's how I do it. And then, granted, there's been some songs that I've written that won't make it on the album. Yeah, for sure. But I'll always for record sure. it and kind of see how it's coming out and seeing if it's... Because, see, the thing with, like, me and my music, it's, like, 
with Enter the Paradox, it's like right in the border of being like really poppy and then right in the border of being too metal. Yeah. So I always find that like fine edge of like, uh, is this too hard for Enter the Paradox? And like, cause, which sucks because like, I feel like I'm such a free spirit when I write music that I don't want to have those borders and those boundaries. Yeah. But it's like, I can't have like a deathcore song and then write like a pop punk song and expect people to get that. <laughs> Maybe you put a song in the in between them, right? That, like ties, ties that shit together. Well, you just listen to the the latest album I just put out, and it's pretty much just like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So Chris, tell me a little bit more about like uh, your songwriting process and uh, production. Like, you know, what are your beginning stages um, and your to your final stages? Tell me a little bit about that. All right, man. So a song, single song, is um. It goes a lot of different ways, man. Sometimes I'll just be at the crib looking for beats, hitting up producers, you know, going through old stuff. And if I hear something in that moment that, like, hits me, then I just start writing, you know. And I usually write on my phone. Um, and then other times, you know, I get an idea for a song, just like a concept. Or I'll be driving and, like, see a billboard or some si- mm. something, you know, out, out in the world, fucking triggers, whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of tight. Like, what, oh, and then I put that in my phone. And then I just jot lyrics and try and match lyrics to beats and beats to lyrics. And then I get in the lab. You know, I um, I, I think I'm similar to what you just said because I, nothing is fully written before I start recording, man. Mm. Like, I have a beat and I have, like, a few lines here and a few lines there, but they don't they don't go together at all, you know? And so I just, yeah. start, I just start recording. That's exactly what I do, too. And, like, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to a lot of artists that I come to work with when I'm going to produce them. And they'll be like, oh, man, I don't know if we're ready. Like, we don't have the whole song written. I'm like, good. Huh. That's good. Like, let it evolve in the studio. And, like, I think more people need to do that because there's a magic that can happen in the studio using the technology that we have today, whether it's with pads or synths or, you know, production techniques or, like, even seeing what your voice sounds like through a cool, like, I don't know, like a chorus plug-in or something, just to give you that emotion and give your mind that extra little edge of imagination huh. that you couldn't do just singing a cappella. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, um, you know, I used to record like that with my old group, man. We would, um... Actually, it went 50-50, man. Sometimes we would each like write our verses, go in, lay them down, song, right? Mm-hmm. And other times you get in there, and it's like, I don't really have, like, we're all writing at the same time, and be like, what do you got? What do you got? And then it would come together in some cool way, and we'd end up with, like, back and forth sections and, like, bridge parts and, like, different shit, you know? Uh, but then it's like, how do you not, like, step on toes in that situation while still maintaining the, making sure the song comes out the best it can at the end of the day while not stepping on someone's toes who maybe wrote the bridge, but it might not be as good as the bridge you wrote? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I feel like that's the hardest part about being in a band and having, like, equal songwriters, which is, like, you know, like, I'm the primary songwriter for my group. I know, you know, you're just jonesing straight up. Right. Solo. Nomo, <laughs> solo. So there's things that can be done that are a lot easier Having, you know, being I'm, able to just lay it down and be like, this is what it is. I fight with my, my alter egos in there. Dog. We <laughs> the artist argue, and producer hat? Yeah, we have, like, arguments amongst ourselves. But you're right, man. It is tough when you're in a, in a band with your homies, right? Yeah. And it's like one dude's thinking, like, this is hella tight. And you're like, that's not hella tight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And the and, worst part is, it's like, uh, when do you switch the hat from this is a band we're all friends to this is my friend to like i fucking hate this person (laughs) now after this like (laughs) i think i think the key the key is bro and this is like what i'm about to say is like i wish i knew then what i know now yeah you know what i mean because i don't think that i ever did this enough back then i certainly did it sometimes but never enough Mm -hmm. and that is to be like okay let's try it right and let it ride yeah you know and then like be that diplomatic supportive homie in the band it's like okay cool cool yeah let's try that man let's let's do that and yeah, then i'd yeah. like to try this right and then you put lay them lay 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 yeah. both and that's then- actually exactly what i did with um for for those of you who don't know i used to play in a pop rock pop rock band called the curse of memory uh and they were on vagrant records for a while and growing up learning with those other three dudes in that band, like I learned a lot about what it means to be in a band with people and share song ideas and compromise. Yeah, man. Exactly what you were saying. Like what we would do is go, 
okay, let's compromise. I have this idea, and I really, 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 really feel like this is going to make or break the song if this isn't in there. And the other person feels the same way. What do you do? Try them both, man. You got to try them both. That, you see, you brought me back when you were talking yeah. about that. And then, and then, man, it's like maybe you don't get to make that decision right then. It's like yeah. lay it down. We can't decide. Come you got back an A and to a B. It, come back to it tomorrow. Yeah. And like everybody kind of cools off and like their most the emotions kind of taken out of it a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, pick. You know, I think, man, I, you'd like to think that everybody in a group situation wants what's best for for the song because right. the song is like its own entity right and we just people that are creating this but it's our art right so mm. this is weird fucking balance man and it's it gets tricky uh but i feel like when i was with my group man i had um i had really good experiences with those guys more often than not we got along we created some really good music and uh had a lot of fun some of the best times of my life were with those cats that being said and i, I mean they probably got more mad at me than I ever got at them because I was like controlling some shit, you know what I mean? I yeah. don't know, like so into it. Like, and I was the engineer and it was this and that, you know, and like the organizer, like, have you written your verse yet? Yeah. For that song we started four weeks ago, yeah. you know what I mean? So, who knows, man? There's always got to be Go someone solo. in the group. It's easier, bro. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> There's always someone who has to be the dad of the band. And then that's yeah. there's a lot of reasons why you don't want to be the dad. And usually the person who's the dad of the band goes on and goes solo and then starts to actually like create some stuff that's longer lasting than like like there's a lot of bands that there are groups, you know, that don't get past the point of writing, rehearsing, playing a couple shows, start an album but never finish it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that's so cool about like doing things on a primarily like solo basis. Uh, because there's a lot more room to get things actually completed. Yeah. And I mean, let's, let's take a look at like where we're both at, like compared to where we were in those previous bands. Like I've gotten more things astronomically done than I ever thought possible. Like, you know, we both have like albums out, like, you know, ready to, to download at any moment. And that's a huge place to say that you can get to. Like, I know I remind myself every day, like a lot of artists never get to that point. What's one of the things that got you to that to that point where and also like what keeps your passion alive to want to keep doing that and uh, how can you relate that into uh, DIY for um, the other musicians and producers and solo artists listening right now? All right. So what's the the question is how do I keep my passion alive and how did I get to a point where I was putting out music and like making yeah like I think that's the hardest place for a lot of uh, artists to get to like th there's that gap there like, so, like one finish. they think am i am i good enough yeah and then once you find out you are good enough it's like and you start putting that effort in like you you got to have that diy spirit to get to that next place because here's the fact people i mean one in a million 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 people get picked up like taylor swift or like someone like you know what i mean like like that just randomly but then most of us that work our asses off and do stuff DIY for a long time. Long time. Yeah. And long, yeah. And long you got to know that that's coming ahead. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. that's something that I've seen you do really well. And I think you have a lot to give back to people on that. Share something from that journey. Man. So, I mean, it was never a problem for me to put out an album. Never. And even back with the group, dude, it was like, yo, we're recording, we're playing shows. We were, I mean, and we were coming up the first time before like this is when myspace just cracked you know what i mean mm. before e email you know i was in clubs with cds like asking for the manager like can can we play here you were that guy oh yeah man dude hustling i was so hard. afraid to be that guy hustling at that time hustling bro because we're like the same age yeah i'm 30 31 almost 32 i thought you are yeah Oh, okay. I thought you were like 27. I'm 27. Tw yeah, hey, man. We are the same we're age. We're basically the same we're age. The same, we're but the we same grew up age. in that same time with like MySpace and stuff. Like MySpace yeah, had man. a big, big, big factor in how a Chris memory got found. Uh, Yeah, and a few other people, man. I mean, MySpace was Facebook. MySpace mm. was YouTube. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it was, was everything like, in one. It was. I mean, that was the, the joint when the internet was coming coming out, really. You know what I mean? Um. Uh, but like I said, man, we, I didn't use email. It was nothing like that, you know? I don't even think I was, like, texting on my phone, bro. Yeah. Like, we were in the clubs, shaking hands, in the streets with flyers, on the beach. We lived in Lake Tahoe. 
it's boom on the mountain with CDs, bro. Just like going hard, <laughs> snowboarding, sliding, going down the mountain. Be like, hey, come check out my show, dude. For real, for real, for real. You know what I mean? And back then, when I was young and and fucking high and drunk, like yeah. that shit was no problem. You know what I mean? It was like super. <clears throat> it came natural, you know. Everlasting confidence, straight up. <laughs> But man, so by putting out an album was never hard. It was like, you know, we had songs, we're putting out an album. Let's put it out, you know? Yeah. And we just get the graphics, get it printed, done. And um, and then I've just been able to continue doing that, you know? I think now putting out an album is uh, it's still just as fun. It's still just as nerve-wracking. Yeah. You know, you wonder uh, what people are going to think. Is it going to sell? You know, and all that stuff really, you know, it's like, you shouldn't even trip about it, but you do, you know? Well, when you're the engineer or producer wrapping up the album the last, like, month or the last, like, two weeks of mixing and final mastering and all that is the most stressful, god-awful <laughs> experience and feeling, and I hate it, but it also keeps me out of my head from worrying about the promotion and all that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, that's what's next is the promotion, <clears throat> and that's when, that's when you really separate the men from the boys, you know? It really is. I think when, when you talk about people have a problem putting out an album in in hip hop i see i see people put out albums you know all the time you yeah. know what i mean like yeah it's definitely different in like the rock world i think metal it's world. i think it's i think it's probably like harder in the rock and metal world oh, it because, totally is. because you have to like deal with a full band and schedule people and you've got to come up with money for studio time you know what i'm saying yeah. to like get into a place to like Lay down drums and all that stuff that really requires a live, a real studio. Whereas hip hop, I mean, dude, I rap. We're rapping right now. Like this is, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> right into so the mic, yeah. You can buy you can buy beats online for five bucks. You know, from yeah. Like whoever. Well, for some people who don't know how to go about doing that, um, how can some people do that? Because some people have no idea that you can do that. Well, now you know. That you can do that. Like, uh, how do you reach out to people online? Like, is there a certain website that you go to, or you just know people? Um, okay, so yeah, look, there's a bunch of websites, man. I, you know, I I go to SoundClick a lot, uh, and SoundClick? I SoundClick SoundClick, yeah, okay. spelled how it sounds. Yeah, and um, there's a ton of producers, beats broken down by categories and stuff. Um, so that's like a good first start, right? And I spend a lot of time on there, man. So like, for example, the last album that I put out. Uh, it probably took me over, over easily over a year and a half to find so all find those beats, beats. So, yeah, to yeah. find the beats. So are they royalty free beats or do you actually <laughs> contact a producer and work, like work directly with them? It can go both ways and I okay. do, and I do both. Right. Okay. So it's like, they have beats for sale. You get to purchase a lease. Right. So it's like with, for the $40 lease, man, it's like you get to sell 5,000 copies, use it for commercial use once. So it's kind of like louder, blah 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 kind of you thing. Yeah, louder service for cover songs. I uh, never heard of that actually. Okay, but okay. yes, yeah, so it's like I make a beat, I put it up. You want to buy it for forty bucks? You get to sell X copies and use it on one project, uh, and then if you end up selling more than that, I then I get royalties right at that mm. point, or you rebuy the lease for another four thousand copies. Uh, it, it's simple, man. So it could be lucrative being a beat maker on a site oh like that. Oh my god, man! <laughs> These dudes can kill it, bro. So whether or not like you think you, you actually do well or not, you can still get paid. Yeah, if you being make a beat it, maker. If, oh, yeah, 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 for sure. But then you know, man, what I've done, what I've done recently on this album that I'm working on now, <clears throat> um, is is I, through the past couple of years of putting out projects and just buying beats or whatever, like I found some producers that I know I, I'm always going to check their stuff because I like it, yeah. you know? And so I've reached out to them, you know, on their emails, you know, direct and been like, yo, can you custom make me something? And then I'll send them samples of like different songs that I like by who knows, you know, it could be anywhere from John Mayer to to Alicia Keys, to Eminem, right? And I send them those three songs. And mm. I'm like, yo, make something that's a mix of all of these put mm. together. You know what I mean? And then I pay them for that. So this new album is like a lot of custom custom beats, a lot of rock, sound, um, music, you know what I mean? Like music, musical, in musical instruments, <laughs> guitars, and all that shit. Yeah. Dude, that's wild. I mean, I didn't even know that that was like a possibility or something to do. I'm like, I learned 
from that, which is really cool. And I'm sure a lot of other people are going to learn from that as well. I mean, that gets me really excited that there's a outlet for that. Because I think is. there's a lot of people who like want to rap and they're like, what do I do? Like, I got all these rhymes in my head. I got all these great lyrics, but I don't know who to contact or how to get a hold of someone who can make this happen for me. YouTube. Another one's YouTube. Okay. Go to YouTube, type in like Drake sounding hip hop beats mm. and a million will pop up. You know, and you can just Drake hit, sounding hip hop beats. Okay, like you know, whatever your thing is, you're like, I want to yeah. make a future track. Type in future hip hop beats, and like a- anything you want will come up, dude. Hit okay. the pro- hit the producer, or a lot of times there's a buy link right there. You know, make the purchase, lay it down, become a superstar overnight, bro. <laughs> That's how it works. Literally, and I mean, in uh, folks, everyone out there, I mean, you can go out and get a home recording studio like set up like fairly cheap nowadays. I mean, most of the mixing and mastering I do is literally in my bedroom, and uh, you know, there. But I mean, if you're just trying to, um, if you're a solo singer or a a rapper, you know, like you can go out and get a very affordable, nice condenser mic Mm -hmm. and um, make it happen, you know, like an affordable interface, like, you know, Pro Tools has a lot of great products out there with the Mbox, so you can buy the Mbox interface, like an Mbox Pro, like I have an Mbox Pro with uh, Pro Tools 10 and 11, and uh, you're kind of set, like that's all you really need, and then you just do what Chris is doing, hit up somebody from SoundClick, and then you got yourself a project. Straight up, man. Yo, and I swear to God, you can learn anything on YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah. So it's like, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, what are the people listening to this thinking after like we're talking about yeah, this? Yeah, and they're yeah. like, yeah, but I don't know how to mix. It's oh, like, watch YouTube. Yeah, my- like go to YouTube, bro. You can get, you can learn like pretty quickly, you know? Really quickly. And I it's mean- not like with, with like what you do with rock music yeah. is a hundred times harder. You know, because you've got there's a lot more going on, dude. There's there's <laughs> freaking drum mics and kicks and snares and toms and here's the biggest problem with live guitars, mics too. You know what I mean? And you like gotta all EQ of that all stuff. the all the nasty like muffled low <laughs> mids like harsh highs out. Whereas with in the digital realm, you know, working with beats and stuff like Chris does. It's there's no there's none of that. Nah, it's man. all like awesome it's, off the bat. <laughs> it's in, it's infinitely easier, bro. Yeah. It really is. Like, and I don't say that to downplay the work that goes into making a hip hop record because there's a lot of work that goes in, into it. And hey, and, I don't know how to do some of the stuff that I hear. Yeah, you know, man, like it, stuff on your latest album. Like the first three tracks, I'm listening to that. I'm like, this stuff's awesome. Like, I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, so there, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And, like, to be able to mix vocals really well is tough. You know what I mean? I mean, it's super, super, super tough. Especially but. rapping, too, I assume, too. Because it's basically, like, almost like what we're doing right now, just, like, talking into the mic. Granted, you're a little bit louder, have more ambiance, and it has more tone and character. But uh, something I've noticed with, especially with condenser mics, it's, like, picking up... It's like you're naked in front of a whole room and like you hear every little nuance of your voice. And when you're singing, I feel like condenser mics are more meant for a, a singer, someone actually singing. But I notice when there's like talking or rapping, it's a lot harder to get that like really nice, like right tone that you're going for for the texture of the song. Huh. I don't even think about that. You haven't thought about that? <laughs> no. Nah, I mean, man. some people just know how to go on a mic and just make it happen man and like i you're definitely one of those people yeah yeah and like bro but there's some people that hear their voice in a mic and they're like oh my god i sound horrible they get all self-conscious like i listen to the sound the mic has Mm. you know what i mean i've gone through mics bro like Mm -hmm. just like bought mics and then been like this one's nope and they've been like nice mics you know (coughs) and i think the ones that the one that i use now that i really like is not the most expensive by any means but it um it's great, the Shure SM7B. They use it a lot in radio broadcasting. And if you, I was in Guitar Center returning yet another mic, dealing with the same guy. I was returning mm. a blue mic, like a nice blue mic. <laughs> and I was talking okay. to the same guy. And I'm like, homie, it's just got this sibilance to it. It's got this high-end airiness that, like, I don't like. Yeah. And he's like, dude, we need, we need to look it up for you. Like, we need to find out what you want. So he just Googled. Again, Google, figure out anything. He's like, best mic for hip hop. And like nine out of ten were like, sure, SM7Bs. You know, a by lot like of guys. Method in, man, this guy, that guy. You know? A lot of guys in metal who do a lot of screaming vocals will use SM7Bs. It's a great and mic, dude. It's, the frequency response is super flat. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It's super flat, so you get like your tone, and then you can adjust with the. They're EQ. really affordable I, too. They're like two ninety nine, right? Nah, I think I think mine was like I think it was like three sixty. So like okay. four hundred. I knew it was between out like door with tax. Yeah, I knew it was between like three hundred and like five hundred, maybe at the most. But I'm pretty sure Michael Jackson used that to record he Thriller did. too. Yeah, he did. Yeah, man. And like yeah. you gotta have a like some mics can't pick up super versatile voices like that, and like like for me live, like I can't use. Uh, uh, 58. I can't, can't use, use the SM58. Like, it just doesn't work with my voice right. Uh-huh. And I've tried for literally, like, my entire musical career to make that mic work for me. everywhere you go has got a 58. Yeah, so I went out and bought a Sennheiser 835. Ah, okay. And that one's just, for some reason, it's like a, I'm pretty sure it's like a dynamic cardioid. And something with the frequency response of that mic, like... It'll, Cause like I'll be able to go from like really low vocals to really high like you know yeah, falsettos yeah. to screams to to mid range like all within thirty seconds when I'm singing with Enter the Paradox live and like I need a mic that can handle all that frequency response um, and the 58 just doesn't do that to me hmm. for me it's like it, but it's still a great workhorse mic you know and like oh, I man, think it yeah. you it can, works you really can well run it over and it works really well for people who have like one style of voice maybe two. But when you have like three or four to five different style voices that you're using in, in like a live setting, you need some kind of mic that can handle all that uh, dynamic range and like that response. Mm-hmm. I feel you, man. Again, I don't have that problem. I just, I'm, <laughs> well, rap, you're lucky. I'm rapping, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? Up there rapping. <clears throat> what else are we talking about? What we got? What should we? What should we? What do people want to know, man? What do they need to know well, about something DIY? that I found that's really interesting with this, like doing this podcast, is like all the things that we think that are so normal, people are struggling with. Oh, uh, okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, because we're in like a position where like we do this stuff every day, and like, I don't know. It's not, like, what's something that you do with promotion that you found that really works for you? Because I feel like people ha- will go out, they'll record a project, they'll write it all, you know, it's done, it's mastered, ready to go. What next? Like, like, do you only do social media? Do you believe in doing PR campaigns? Like, do you like? What's your next step when you go to that? Man, you know, it's it's been a lot of things, and it continues to evolve based on where I'm at, right? So, I um, all right with this last with this last project, I did. You know, you do like the pre-release, the kind of the rollout where you introduce new social media um, banner images and announce the album and then drop a single with a video and promote that, uh, you know, and then the album hits and whatever. When the album hit, I had lined up um, a few reviews on some on some blogs. And uh, so those came out. We took the quotes from those reviews put them in a press release i had a publicist do a press release uh they got some press you know and then my record label uh blasted blasted this pretty much the same thing out through their networks uh i skipped the radio this time you know in the past like with with feel so good that's that's on the album that that song came out in november of 15 and we did big radio it was um that shit was the number one downloaded song for international radio for a couple months. And then it was on a bunch of stations, FM in the US, it was on Sirius, it was on Music Choice. But I skip we skipped all that this time around, man. I just Wait, went, like what stations in, in like LA? None in LA as a matter of fact, but it was playing on like the pop station in Chicago, it was playing on Power One O five in New York, it was playing in um lots of down south markets. Uh, is that the same? Is Power 105 in New York the same as Power oh, 106 in Power, LA? Yes, 106. Is it the same? In, in, is it the same radio station? No. Okay. No, 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 I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, man. So it did. That did well, right? And then um, you expect like big breakout smash. You know what I mean? You're playing on all these radio stations, mm-hmm. and as like a kid growing up, you're like, man, if I just get on the radio, it's game over. You know, and then you're on yeah. the radio, right? Yeah. And it's like, but there's it's oversaturated at the same time. It's like, what happened? You know what I mean? Like, we we came close to a couple big moves, and really though, okay, this is another thing. If you're getting ready to do big song, big budget, big promo, do not do it at the end of the fourth quarter. Don't, right? Because that's what happened to us. Is we dropped that record and went big end of the fourth quarter, or like you mean like fiscal year 2016 right. fourth yeah, quarter exactly fourth quarter so from october to december right okay 
One, all the big names are dropping, so you don't want to be competing, right? But we had guaranteed placements, so we're like, okay, cool, we can still do that. Still had to go with it. Right, and the song was hot. The DJs wanted it. So it's like, okay, man, we kind of can't stop the momentum, so let's go with it, right? And so we did... And what ended up happening was, man, we were talking with Live Nation about a, about an agency deal with Live Nation and talking to Uni- Universal was thinking about picking up the record and releasing it with it, with the real Universal machine behind us, you know, and doing... Distribution? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, the distribution already goes through Universal. That's okay. where my distribution is. But the label, like yeah. Universal, you know, was like, oh, man, this record's getting hot. Like, we might pick this up, pay you for it, put it out. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like... And they just uh, the industry shuts down from like early December to about mid January, and they're like, "Yo, okay, so it's hot. Let's see how it's doing when we come back to work." And by then, the radio campaign had ended. Yeah, that's something that I've hot. heard too. Is that like the the entire music industry goes dark, dark during that bro, time? Dark. Like you can't that's the only do, way to really describe it. Like like yeah. agents, managers, like record labels, their 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 phones are off. <laughs> off. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, we wasted, we didn't waste, we didn't waste, it still did really good, right? And it it opened some doors for future discussions and whatever, right? But if I had waited, like, Mm -hmm. until the first quarter, until February 1st to put out that record, we'd be having a completely different conversation right now. Yeah. 100%, man. So timing is everything. Um, Timing. Don't let your emotions get the best of you, right? Yeah, that's something that's really hard. And like, totally. just when you think you're strong enough, like, have a couple fans give you some negative like comments, and that shit will change quick. <laughs> like, no joke. Enough. Like, I have like, like we, I don't know. We have like a couple. We have like three thousand followers, I think, something like that on um, Instagram, and like, like. This was a couple months ago, and like I had like four fans that's just something negative, while all the rest were saying really good things, and like I let that affect me. <laughs> of course you do, yeah, man. Yeah, like it's like I'm a sensitive person, you know, and like I really love what I do, and I have a lot of passion for it, and like I just want everyone to get along. Right, straight up, man. But you know, at the same time, well, I I'm the same exact way, right? Yeah. Like, you say something negative about about my music, and yeah. I'm like, I'm like damn, yo, that sucks. But you know, at the same time, I go. My half of what, the way I approach my marketing is like, I can't try and win them all. Yeah. Right? Find find your niche, right? People who. Well, that's something and, we should talk and about. You about. gotta exclude a ton yeah. of people, right? Because you can't win them all, man, and you're not yeah. gonna. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's tough when people. Well, I didn't hate, say anything but, about our music that was negative. It was uh, just like them being like snide, like social media users. Oh fuck! It was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it wasn't like the end of the world. It was just like, you know, you think you got this tough hide and then like you get in that situation and like you're going to get some haters, even for no reason. But this is something that I wanted to get into because a lot of people don't understand how important marketing and business and like mm-hmm. you and I were talking about this, like, you know, we're like, like I'm like a geek for like marketing and the business and all this stuff and like um, target audience, hmm. how important that is and how much uh, bands, artists, don't think about that and if they do think about it they think they're like selling out or something and it's like we gotta have a reality check and like a little talk here because if you don't have a clear understanding of what your target audience is you're gonna have a really hard time breaking as an artist and if you leave it up to other people what i found is that they're gonna hear your music and just assume that this is your target audience and put it to a bunch of people that might not be your uh strongest audience right right i think um Super important, man, to identify your niche, to identify where you where your sound fits in, right? You know, and at first, putting out music kind of blanket, just put it out, right, is cool, and that's what you kind of have to do, you know, if you're not gonna invest in in uh, promotion and advertising, you have no other choice but to just mm-hmm. put it out, and whoever listens to it listens to it. Some are gonna like it, some aren't, right? But if you're gonna invest the money into uh, a PR campaign or a um, an advertising campaign or whatever, man, you really need to know who is going to mess with you, right? Like, who is your fan, you know? And I think the the easiest way to kind of figure that out is... You're your home fan. <laughs> You're your biggest, that's the way I look at it. You're your biggest fan. Like, what would right. you want to see as a fan? What were you going to say? Sorry. <laughs> well, that too, but it's like, who do people tell you you sound like? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, so it's like, oh, 
Enter the Paradox, you know, people tell me that we sound like old Blink-182 sometimes or whatever they tell you, right? You're like, okay, so like people who like Blink-182 might like my music, right? Well, guess what? In the digital age, bro, there is a way that you can target those exact people. Right, you can put your content out Hashtags. to exactly them. <laughs> right. Hashtags and Instagram are seriously one of the biggest game changer things for music. Right. And I that's feel like. free. That, yeah, the and hashtags that's free, yeah. are free. Yeah, bro. I'm understand just, them, use them I'm because just, you can find your target audience through hashtags. Straight up, man. And yeah. and th- there's some ninja stuff, man. Yeah, th- yeah. This is ninja right here. Like no one knows this. What I'm about to tell you, <laughs> no one knows this, bro. Late on, if, if you Google. Uh, you can literally Google like ninja marketing and like find all this stuff that I'm about to say. But there are advertising agencies, right, that will take whatever content that you want on a pay per view basis. You can do pay per click, pay per view, but what I'm about to tell you is pay per view. So, say for me, it's like um, got some of my target audience is like Machine Gun Kelly, right? Something mm-hmm. like that. So I can go to this ad agency and say, okay, take Machine Gun Kelly's website, right? And he gets, a th- you know, 20,000 hits a day or something, right? Okay. And I can take my website and if you go to go to MachineGunKelly.com yeah. and, you, and as it's loading, my website will pop up for five seconds. And if you take an action, you stay on my website. And if as you an do- ad? Yeah. Like, you go to my webpage first, like a redirect to my webpage because you were trying to go to Machine Gun Kelly's. You know what I'm saying? You could pay for that. That is some ninja shit. I told you, bro. I'm <laughs> telling you, man. Like, you can do, what? you can get so laser targeted with your advertising. You just yeah. got to be willing to spend the money. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you got to be willing to fork over a little dough and, and see what happens. And at the first, you're going to lose money. Absolutely, you will lose money money oh absolutely chalk it, chalk <laughs> you it up you kind of have to yeah of course you do man because yeah. you have to find who's your audience yeah. you know what i mean you can think all you want and i can say yo you sound like this guy but until you start putting out music into the marketplace and you can start having pixels put on your websites and through that you can look at really who are the people that hit your site through Here's- those retargeting pixels and stuff like what's their age what's their this what other websites do they go to all that stuff is really important to figure it out like people pay millions of dollars to figure that out with like advertising companies but and you can i was gonna say to figure figure that out exactly what you're talking about that website radio airplay some people have great results with it some people hate it radio have you heard of it radio airplay radio oh yeah it's it used to be uh what, what it used to be called django radio well, it still is. It's like the service you listen to is called Django, and you, it's kind of like Pandora. Right. And like Radio Airplay is the artist hub where yeah. you enter your yeah, songs man, into I've and done stuff. That. I've yeah. Done that. yeah. And like I found that it's working really well for me in the sense of figuring out who my target audience is in a way broader level than I even thought. Because there basically, for people who don't know what it is, like you enter your song into it. And then uh, you choose the artist that it sounds like, that you think it sounds like. You can choose a bunch of artists. And then people listening to those artists' stations on the Django app, well, it'll show if they listen to it or if they became your fan. And then what you can find out from that is, um, you know, look and see. Like, like we posted um, Sweet Intentions. That was the first song that we did, and this was like a year ago. And I found that randomly, like, a lot of people who listen to All Time Low... Like lo- like became our fan after hearing Sweet Intentions, and I never would have thought that. And yes. I, and then you p- apply that to a bigger level. Mm-hmm. And the second artist that people followed a lot after listening to who actually became fans was the Used. And so I was like, oh my god! Like if you just apply this to a bigger level, like one plus one equals two. Like if we get on some kind of national tour with the Used or All Time Low, we're gonna walk away with a bunch of the fans from that artist, I mean, from that show, regardless if they have ever heard our music before or not. Right, and I think I think you went from they like me on Django to we could get on a tour with them. I mean, you skipped a whole step, you know, and that is take that to Instagram, to Facebook, to mm. Twitter, 
to every social media. Oh, I already media. got that unlocked. Yeah, see, like, they don't know that. Okay, Either. see, that's what I'm talking about. Right. This is the kind of things that we think about normally every day that we just do. Yeah. And some people so, don't even think this so way. So you're, you're, you're getting that data, right? Yeah, like, it's all can, data that can, can be used. You can see it on, on radio airplay. That's how you target like, your audience. Right, it's like, oh, this guy's a fan of this, and he liked my stuff. I'm seeing, okay, a thousand of these people from that like this one band like me on this one platform. So now on Instagram, I got to start throwing in a hashtag with that band's name yeah. and trying to pull their fans from there. Another way you can do is go on their profile, let's say the use profile, and um, and then you just start commenting and engaging with their fans. Abs- absolutely, And that, that's really man. crucial. Like not just liking a page, but like commenting. That's real engagement because yeah. people somebody, need to see you. I mean, yeah, you they need to engage talk. with you. Yeah. And like we we've gotten a lot of actual like legit fans just from doing that, and um, it's really powerful doing that. And Instagram is a game changer. Like I feel like Facebook, the algorithms for music artist uh, profile pages aren't like really set up correctly to gain a lot of new traction on that. They're not and, unless you're buying the uh, Facebook ads. Right, I buy and Facebook it, ads. Yeah, you have to sometimes. Have like, to. if you're really promoting something, or else no one's going to show up. It's not going to show up on their feed because music artist profiles are literally like the lowest algorithm based thing that will show up in someone's news feed. And that's how you see things on Facebook unless you're clicking directly on that page. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it's tough. You know, I was just reading something about this the other day uh, about the algorithm and the percent. And it's like two to five percent of your total likes will naturally see your content right that's two, sad. two to five percent and here's the thing is that the more it grows the more money it costs you to reach that audience right mm. so right now my that face makes sense. right now my facebook page is at about two thousand likes right okay two thousand and i can do a post and if i promote it i can reach about that many people for like 20 bucks Right? I think it's ten bucks. Yeah, well, ten bucks you to reach your, about a thousand people. You set, you set your threshold. Set your budget, right? Yeah. And so for me, it's like if I'm going to spend twenty, I can hit right around two thousand people, right? Something All that is people. cool about that too is that you can engage your audience, mm-hmm. the people who have liked your page, or you can engage a new audience based off artists that sound similar to you or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so both of those. So this is something that I was thinking about the other day. It's like you when you're marketing to your target audience, you got to understand. Am I targeting new listeners or am I targeting current fans right now? And like, those are two completely different strategies. I do both. Yeah, well, you have to. But I'm saying like, you gotta, you can't just, it, sometimes it's really important to understand like, I think things can be even more effective when you go into it. Yes, you have to do both, but how they're both slightly different can re possible better better benefits oh know? man the, the language has to be totally different your yeah. ad your ad copy if i'm talking to you as someone who likes already likes jones's page yeah. or whatever yeah. and like you kind of engage with me you know who i am or whatever yeah. i speak to you different than i speak to somebody new yeah right? somebody new it's like what's so special about your music and why am i going to click on it and listen to it right what's the reason like yeah. no one needs another free download bro from yeah. band fucking whoever, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like nobody, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So like, and the, and man, you could spend, people spend lifetimes and careers and make six figures understanding what gets people to click on shit online. Yeah. That's a whole career path for yeah. super yeah. smart people, right? And as a musician in this DIY stuff, man, mm. when you're going to sit down and you're going to create a Facebook ad, you better believe that you need to Google everything you can about that topic before you put it out. Because mm. if you're just like, check my shit out, you know, like no one's, that doesn't work. You know what well, I mean? Yeah. And I think as far as using the Facebook ads, like uh, cost effectively and just effectively in general, I think it's a good tool to engage new listeners with. Totally. Do you agree with that compared to yeah. your current listener? Because anyone who's like your current fan is most likely engaging with you on other platforms or your website, or maybe they'll check your Facebook too. Ish. But like Ish. engaging new audiences with 10 bucks, paying for 1,000 to 2,000 likes, or I mean 1,000 to 2,000 people engaging or seeing your, your post is pretty intense. That's good. Super good. Yeah. And people, I feel like people are like, Man, I can't believe they charge money. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. Oh my god! It's like, and dude, it's like, you gotta. You, it's like, I get it. That it's sucks. called investing. Right, right. It's called and, investing. It's, and, if and you look sucks. at it like a business, it makes sense. 
hundred percent, but... bro. Like you don't want to spend your money, but you have to, bro. And like the game is not changing. So either shut up and learn how to play it right. Exactly. Or quit bitching and do yeah. music as a hobby and don't get upset at Facebook. Hundred you know percent. We're what gonna I'm do saying? a pound right here and hopefully it picks up on the mic. Dude, yeah. I think we, we got, got it. A little yeah, bit. we got it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another thing too. It's like with Facebook ads, don't do a Facebook ad on hey, come check out my music, free download. No, no one's going to click on it. No. It's got to be something special, you know? Like, this is the way I look at social media. For every time that you say, like, hey, our new album's out, or hey, check out our new single, you got to have, like, at least four to five posts in between of other stuff. 100%, dude. And there's another thing you need to read about and study, bro, is, like, how to use social media right when you're just posting, what to post. Yeah. No one... People... So who says this? A lot of people say this. You know, it's like no one likes to be sold to, but mm. everyone wants to buy. Mm. Right? It's like when I show up to buy a car or something, right? It's like I'm trying to buy a car, right? Like I yeah. want a new car. Even if I don't want a but new car. But you act like you're not. I want a new car. Like yeah. all the time I want a new car. Yeah. Right? But I hate when I show up and you try and sell me a car. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, people love music, bro. Music is, like, the one thing that, like, transcends cultures. It gives you emotion and feeling and mm. can bring us together on some level based on the so the sound, not even about the lyrics. So you can be, I don't understand you at all, but I feel that, right? Mm. People love music, and people consume it, right? Mm. It's a part of everything. It's in commercials. It's in everything. Music surrounds us, man. But no one wants me to go, yo, hey, Buy my shit. Buy my buy my single, man. Buy da 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 da. You know, it's like they want to. I feel like fit people, the audience wants an experience, man. They want me to to sell you, but not in a salesy way, man. They, I want to. I want to attract you, not promote to you, right? It's and about I, having interesting content, not interesting selling points. That's right. kind of what I feel like. Engaging content. Engaging content, man. Ask yeah. what they think, right? What do you don't, think Every time you have it? something you're going to sell, don't just post it. Like, you got to have stuff in between that. And that's where you kind of got to get creative. And if you're not willing to figure out what that is and how to engage with your audience like that, like, um, either throw in the towel or get some inspiration and look at some of your other bands, favorite bands' posts and see what they're doing. That's the great advice. Hit the nail on the head with that one. Hit the nail on the head with that one, bro, for real. <laughs> You know, who's your favorite artist? Yeah. What's he post? Yeah. You know, like... Because that's also your, what your target audience is already used to. Right. Copy Ding, it. ding, ding. Copy yeah. it. Like, is that... Did he post the sunset? Um, you go outside. You can do the same the thing, but photo. also identify, too. Like, how can you do something that your target audience is already used to, but it's still unique to you? Yeah. Oh, this has got to be in line with, with you. You can't yeah. just go change up who you are because your yeah. favorite artist, like post that you know what yeah. i mean like maybe that's not in line with your brand you know what i mean yeah. like maybe yeah, that's yeah, not exactly. you or it is but you have to deliver that's another that same thing. image in a different way you know align your post to your brand and what you're trying to uh, show people who you are as an artist yeah yeah man and look man this stuff is you know we talk and talk about it talk about it and it, but it's confusing mm -hmm. it really is you mm -hmm. know and i'm I'm okay at it, but I, st dude, I still read. I was reading blogs today about exactly what we're talking about, just because that's oh, I what I do, do all the time. You know, yeah. I just, I, I'm always trying to like learn and figure it out. And I'm on get all better. the, all the emails I get are like all stuff like this. Yeah, it's like I know how to write a song. I know how to record a song and easy. mix and master. That's song. easy. easy. That's the easiest part. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like okay, selling the shit and like getting it out to an audience in an effective way is the, is one of the most. Um, intelligently uh into what, what am i trying to say intellectually stimulating and challenging things for me in my life i would agree man it's yeah. uh it's all consuming but it's a good consuming you yeah know what I mean? yeah totally it's like okay like musicians like are one of the, some of the most like uh music artists some of the most intel like uh intellectually stimulatingly like people we need that we need that where you get off on creativity so to bring us from like that left hemisphere of the brain to the right is is such a like culture shock but it's so necessary to navigate ourselves in this next part of the music career because here's the reality as much as we want this to be a reality the re the bigger record labels aren't in artist development anymore. No, man. They do have those departments, but it's not a focus anymore. Guess what they're focusing on? Looking for people doing the shit we're talking about. If they know how to DIY themselves, they know how to sell themselves in a certain way. That's attractive to them because they don't have enough money to, to, to teach people about that anymore. They want to know you're business-minded so that 
you know, everyone can make money and have a good time and support themselves and, you know, do this effectively so that we can continue to make great music to an audience that's continuing to support yeah, the artist. I, I think the the major labels, again, you hit it on the head, man, they're not looking to in, invest in you until you're at a place where you have an audience, right? Mm-hmm. So don't dude, don't even worry about a record deal. Worry about... How what do you a, get to that point? Because what, yeah. you can navigate... Whether you need a record label or not at that point. Right, man. You need fans, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you need fans. And people do, you know, stuff backwards, right? It's like, I got zero fans, but I'm trying to get on the radio and do MTV. Yeah. It's like, what happens then? Right? Well, like, I think everyone has to go through that reality check. And I've been through it, bro. Yeah, I mean, me I've been on yeah. I mean, I have some fans and my numbers on social media are decent, right? But, like, when I was on MTV and on the radio for a couple different songs and videos it's like we didn't quite see the explosion that you would you thought you would think comes with that kind of exposure yeah. right you know yeah. and a lot of that has to do with not having a big enough audience as it is mm-hmm. you know what i mean um not having enough fans to go, oh my God, I just saw Jones in on MTV. Hey, did you know that? Yeah. Right? And talk to somebody and yeah. spread it. Mm-hmm. Right? Because if, if we're both, all right, check it out. You and me are sitting here, right? And somebody is on MTV and we, none of, neither of us know them, right? And we mm-hmm. just go, yeah, whatever, tight song. And that's the last we think about it, even if we like the artist, right? Yeah. But if I've heard of that guy, I go, yo, he's blowing up. I heard of that guy. And you go, who's that? And I'm like, oh, yeah. that's so-and-so. Yeah. Multiply that times 100,000. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I did that and with that's a, word of mouth. a day to remember. Um, great band. I remember a couple of years ago hearing one of their songs on K-Rock or like in the radio. Mm-hmm. I'm like, they're not a band you think that would play in the radio. And I was like freaking out. I was like, oh my God, this song sounds incredible on the radio. I haven't heard this song yet. I got so excited and I was in a car with like six people. There you go. Freaking out. And I was like, this is a day to remember. Like, this sounds incredible. And like, who knows? Maybe some of those people are listening to them still today. Maybe. But when no one knows who you are and you end up on a platform like that, it's like... It's harder to push it, it in the it, right dude, way. Dude, it's super hard. You need a built-in audience. So step one, get fans. <laughs> step two, learn how to get fans. It's really step one, learn how to get fans. Yeah. Google, read. You YouTube. Know, be willing to invest some money in, and lose it in, in building an audience. Yeah. Just learn how to how to create engaging content. And if it, you're doing those three, four things every single day, you're on the right track. I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. And then you... We'll bring it way back to 30 minutes ago when you asked about passion. Then that's when passion comes in. Because you can't do that for a week and go, dude, I only got like 10 new followers. Like, this, <laughs> this shit don't work, bro. It's like, you got to have to. You got to look at it in a year where it's going to multiply the Longer, that. dog. I've been doing this. Sometimes like, you got to look at just a year to get by. You know what Straight I mean? Straight up, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm 11 years in. 11 of grinding it out and learning and doing ups and downs and a couple you know just dude everything in between blood sweat and tears literally over and over and over again Hmm. rehabs one rehab rehab sober living (laughs) right the whole nine bro and you got to be willing to put the work in day in day out because you love this shit for more than a decade you know to like kind of get somewhere unless you're luckier than me and i hope you are yeah, yeah. More power to you. But then again, man, I see people come in, do this thing for a year, and then they, they out. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, they don't, it doesn't happen fast enough. You gotta love it, period. Absolutely. Let's see, how much more time do you got you have before you need to head out? I have few, I got a few minutes, man. I'm not really stressing. All right, cool. Fuck it. Uh, well, let's talk, uh, just briefly, let's shift the, shift the topic to uh, pre-sale. Pre-sell tickets. Oh, that's right. Because yeah, we need to talk, talk about, that. about that. Yeah. All right, all right. All right, so we also know pre-sell as uh, people, some people call it pay-to-play. Yes. And uh, I think this deserves, like, you know, a discussion and looking at the pros and cons of should I do pay-to-play. I choose to call it pre sale because that is actually what it is. We live in a time where venues are kind of struggling to survive, and mm-hmm. we have to understand that. You know, so many music artists just think, I should be paid to play my music live. You should. But economically, it doesn't make sense for venues to, to host a show every single night with artists bringing in five people right. to a show and right. expecting their business to continue to thrive. Like, 
we got to be, they're running a business. And technically, if you're doing your, uh, your music career right, you're running a business too. So you have to be two business people and figure out how to make this work. And a lot of times, you know, they'll run it with a pre-sale uh, ticket. Um, Chris, I'd like to hear you speak a little bit about this and like your experience with it. I think that pre-sales are, there's no way around them, man. Really, you know what I'm saying? Even, you know, even dude, like, even me, I don't want to say like, even me, bro. Like, but you know, I've won a couple of awards, been on this, that, the other, and I still get hit up to sell tickets, bro. You know what I mean? And I'll do it because one, I know that I can, right? And two, if the opportunity is right, I don't mind, even if I have to lose a little money for the right opportunity. Exactly. You know, but I think what you were saying, man, it's a business, bro. And like, these clubs cost money to rent. The promoters come out of pocket. They're putting on a local show night and they want bands to play. Guess what? Local bands don't draw people. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if if left to their own devices with no like pre-sale potential to lose money hanging over your head, like you're probably going to bring like four people, dude. You know what I mean? Like Let's be real for like 2 seconds. If venues didn't start doing this, all the venues would have been out of business. Right, there'd be no place to play. There'd be no place to play. Yeah. Right, exactly, man. So it's, it, look, you, you cannot get around it. And t the way to get around it is to grind it out, keep pushing, build fans, and get to a place where you draw a crowd and agents and booking people know that, mm -hmm. and they'll throw you on for free and offer to pay you, you know, because they know yeah. you're, bringing, you're bringing a crowd, you know? You have to build that uh, reputation with the booker like for my band, we have a reputation with uh, the whiskey. Yeah. Like we, I know like all the like the guards, the the security guards there now because they're so used to seeing us there. But we're known as being a professional band that shows up, does our thing. We continue to build a draw, and uh, something else that's kind of cool too. And like you kind of have to have your business mind with this. It's like okay, you have your promoter, uh, the one person you usually uh, work with on negotiating ticket sale prices and all that. Um, I'm always talking to them about what national acts are coming into town. Right. And how can we get on that show? Right. And if you have to do pre-sale for that, who fucking cares? Right. Yeah, like exactly. it would be sweet if you didn't. But I mean, dude, like that's like could be big exposure. But is it the right pre-sale for your target audience? That's it. That's it. That's it. Right there. It's exactly it, man. Is it the right headliner? Exactly. Just because, like, okay, let's say, like, if uh, who's huge, man? I don't know. Some. All right. So for me, if Future came to town. And mm -hmm. there was an opportunity to open to open for future. I would pass, because that's probably not quite the right market for me. Mm. You know what I mean? It's probably not quite right. You know, future's a trap artist. You know, I don't do yeah. trap music. You know what I mean? We just got offered a couple months ago to play with like Alien Ant Farm. Like, it's not really our right audience. And to their, I don't know anyone who still listens to them. Yeah. So I, mean, I saw so, them live once. It was did you? Back in the day with 311. 311 was like my favorite band. Dude, ever. they were so sweet back in the day. They were like bro. one of the best live bands I've ever seen. Oh my God, so good. Anyway, yeah. 311 is awesome. And sell tickets to concerts because you have to if you want to play shows. You can do fine open mics, dude. There's ways around it. You know, find open mics, play, whatever. But to get your foot in the door, I think you got to sell some tickets, man. You got to do it, right? Mm -hmm. You guys do it. Or do you got to know that you're going to take the loss. to Because like when you do a pre-sale show, some of them, especially if you're going to be playing under a national touring act, you're going to have to fork over about 600 bucks. Yeah, it's gonna, it can be a hefty little price tag. It's a hefty like a little big, price tag. Big show. But you can, if you do it right, you can walk away with a lot of new fans. Make sure you have your banners on stage. Because the biggest thing that I go to when I go see a live show, the bands will say their name. But they'll be like, hey, what's up? We're from LA and we want to sell our new album. We're stoked to be here. Once again, our name is blah, blah, blah. And you can't understand a word they're saying. They're usually cupping the mic. Like, they're not saying anything. They're just like, and you can't understand a word they're saying. They're usually cupping the mic. Like, 58s are terrible on, on stage for, like, articulation. So, I mean, I say our band name literally, like, over five times when we're playing live. As articulate as humanly possible. We have banners on stage with us so you can see the band name. Right. Um, all Smart. that stuff is like really, 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 really important because if they don't see, if they don't hear you say your band name, they're going to see the banner. Right. And that's priceless. You know how many fans you can watch? Like, I've been to a bunch of shows where I'll see a band and I love them 
But because whether they said their name or not, I'll walk away totally ADDing out. Right. Like not knowing who they were because I didn't see it. You yep. hundred percent, man. Be ready. If you're gonna do a show like that, you're gonna fork over the dough, you're gonna invest in yourself in that way. Make sure you don't blow the opportunity. Yeah. You know, you can get up there and kill it. Kill it. But if you didn't say your band name or what you're promoting oh a few times, if you're not out in the crowd shaking hands, trying to get email addresses, giving away free CDs, like meeting people, you blew it. You know, there's I mean? something that I did. Like we we did a nationally touring act when New Year's Day came into town. I know a lot of people maybe listening to this are were at that show, and that was an incredible um, spot for us to take on that. We walked away with a bunch of new fans. I made sure we had it set up. Like that was the first night we got our, our banner set. We had nice. our banners. I said our band name a bunch of times. We had you know, we just had everything worked out. And then I also had uh, Fallen Heroes. Um, which is our latest music video and single out now, available for free that came out on that day um, at the show so people could go and download it. And we were also filming a music video for Fallen Heroes that night. So I tried to do something to make it special, and like I think a lot of fans walked away remembering that. Like, How can you walk away with fans knowing that something was special and that you remember? Like, I have a bunch of people still that message us on Instagram and be like, hey, I remember seeing you guys at the New Year's Day show. Like, you guys were awesome. And uh, we made it special, and they remembered who we were out of like literally nine different bands. Hmm, good. Three of them were yeah. like the nationally touring bands, and like you know, and then people remembered us as well, which is really cool. So doing all that stuff is really important. Being prepped, being prepared, is um, utmost importance. Do you have any cool uh, pre-sale ticket kind of experience with um, something that you walked away with that you did really well that you felt like you executed well with prepping? Hmm. Man, I've done so. I've done so many where I've sold tickets, you know. Uh, and uh, you know, here's the thing, man. The way I, the way I kind of approach my career is, I always see where I've screwed up, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I do a lot of things right, but there's always something that I let slide. Uh, and and maybe it's you know I didn't, man, I didn't push enough merch that that night, or I didn't shake enough hands, or. Man, I didn't. Uh, I didn't have my email sign up sheet with me. Bummer. Or I forgot to say this one thing on stage. Yeah. Um, Let's so talk I, about email for a second because I recently just had it uh, got an email sent to me from uh, one of the big music companies talking about how email is like ninety two percent more effective in engaging with your audience than social media. Yeah, I read that's like a, lot a big of same number. Things. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Email, and I think the... Because uh, that's direct to fan engagement. I think the future, something I've been looking into lately, the future that's that's going to surpass email and engagement rates is, is text message marketing. Hmm. Tech, most direct to fan text. Yeah, it's like 90, 93% of all text messages are read within three minutes. Hmm. Right? Okay. And everyone's got their phone. And it's a digital world, man. Well, you can set that up on your website easily. Yeah, you can. There's services that offer, you know, text message marketing. I'm gonna get onto that. Yeah, it's, it's I like a, it. It's a good look. I I get so yet. many emails, even from people that I'm involved in, like a PR campaign with, and I can't even, you know, read all their emails or like I'll overpass them. Right. And like that says it right there. I mean, I'm way better with text than I am with email. Granted. I'm answering and replying to emails all throughout the day, but I can't. I get too many. I can't possibly be on it. Um, you you were mentioning uh, something about that. I think is really impressive about your career, Chris. Is the uh, what was the name of the award show that you won? The music award show that you won it two years in a row. I won the L.A. Music Awards. That's a big deal. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh yeah, man. You know, um, I was nominated in 2013 again in 2014 for Hip Hop Artist of the Year. And then in 13 for social media artist, and then in 14 for solo performer. And uh, man, you know, the fans came through, man. They voted for me. And then the industry, you know, the fans vote and the industry panel looks at the vote, see who wins, and then they have their little say. And uh, I, was, I came home with the awards, man. It was super cool. Really grateful for everyone who voted, man. And, um, you know, it took a long time to get to that place where you were recognized by by like a committee in an award show man yeah it's a big deal like i've entered my band in it and like you know i at the time i wasn't engaged with this the kind of stuff that we're talking about right now it was so out of 
sight for me yeah. out of mind, you know, that like I wasn't even on that level. And but something that's really interesting about how you went about it is like I remember, you know, you uh, you personally messaged me and said, "Hey, man, if you could vote for me on this, it'd be really cool." Like I oh, nominated you bet your this. Ass is a cool, I did. Yeah. This is a cool thing but i know that you didn't just message me you know because we're we're friends like i know that you were hitting up everyone and it, it yeah. wasn't just a copy and paste thing as simple as that it was personalized yeah and it yeah. meant more to me because you reached out to me in that specific way yeah man absolutely take the time man take the time you know write a message like i know you right yeah you know so it's like i'm gonna write to you you uh -huh. know what i mean and uh you know, I wrote a man, I wrote a lot of people, bro, you know, and it's still when I have shows and I have to sell tickets or like we're promoting and I don't have to sell tickets. It's like I have the venue. I rented the venue. I don't need to sell anything, but I got to make sure people are coming. It's like, man, I make a list and I text the homies, you know, like, hey, what's up, dog? I'll pre, you know, we got a show. Can you come? No. Nah? All right. Cool, dog. Next time. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But like. You got to reach out, dude. You can't expect yeah. nothing. And there's been times where like I've been able to come and then you hit me up the next time and I can come. Yeah. And that's just the way with it. I think a lot of people give up when people say, no, I can't come. No, man. You can't and take it personally. Yeah, man. yeah. You, you can't. You know, it's like. And maybe their schedules didn't work out or maybe they really did get called into work. You know, whatever knows? it is, like, you just can't, you can't let that stuff affect you. You just got to keep pushing forward. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Keep pushing forward, man. Yeah. Or send an email and avoid texting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we're, if we're going back to email marketing, man. I think I think that back to emails. I think it's mm -hmm. it's effective. Again, it comes down to like what's your subject line? How do you talk to people in the emails? You know, how do you get them to actually open it? You know what I mean? Like, dude, it, before you get an email address, I think you need to engage on social media. It's got to be, dude. It's got to be a combination of so many things working at the same time. That, well, here's like, what I culminates. do with emails. When I send emails out to fans, like basically what I'll do is I'll, I'll treat it kind of like a social media post, except you don't see all this other shit constantly coming up on your newsfeed. Right. <laughs> it's just true. very simple, very short. Like I like emails that I maybe have to scroll down once on a page because I'm busy in my day. Yeah. I got about like five seconds to look at an email and right. decide, am I going to read this later? Am I going to read this and understand what this is saying and move on with my day and feel like I got some information? Mm-hmm. And so I, I send stuff out that's really, really simple. Like, hey, our new music video's out. Our new album's out. Or we have new tour dates. Check these out. Mm -hmm. Really, really simple so you don't even have to think about what you're seeing. You just see it, interpret it, and almost in, so that it, it's like subconscious marketing. You yeah. Know, it just hits you like you understand it on a subconscious level without fully, like, consciously taking it all in. And also, I want, I want to make sure that people understand, like, we're talking about some really overwhelming stuff if you never even thought about this or like you don't think that you have to take on the whole burden like if you're in a group you know delegate some of these things to different people sometimes in my experience i found that it doesn't always work i mean not everyone is as reliable or people you know don't look at the stuff as important or oh our manager will do that for us eventually like if you have that attitude it's going to be really hard for you to progress and sometimes you might have to be that one dude in the group that really takes this on and handles it all yourself. and like, Or you're going to build up resentments against the other guys in the group and then it's going to be destructive to the rest of the band. You're going to think they don't care as much. And it's like, no, no, no. None of that shit is real. Like, The only thing that matters is like, if you understand how to do this, you're going to do it. Try delegating it. If it doesn't work, take it on yourself and just make it happen. You know, You can be your own entrepreneur for the band. You can be the business dude for the band or the group, whatever it is. But um, yeah, I, I kind of want to, you know, veer the interview more to wrapping up stage. I feel like we've had a really, really solid interview. And uh, yeah, just to wrap up, Chris, tell me a little bit uh, more about your latest album. It's called Beautiful Disaster. Yes, sir, it is. Beautiful Disaster, man. It was, um, it's been done for a long time, and I finally put it out. Uh, super, super happy with it. It's been received pretty well. We're donating the money to charity, giving it to Music Makes Music. They bring concerts to schools all over the country and promote uh, getting involved with the arts and uh, staying in school, continuing higher education, man. It's a super, super cool charity, and they do a really good thing for kids. So we're going to donate the money to them and uh, available everywhere, dude. You know, iTunes, you name it. You know, if you don't want to buy it, 
steal it. Do <laughs> do something. You know what I mean? Yep. If you vibe with it, cool, man. I you know all the socials are at Jones and Music. So uh, get at me. Let me know what's up, man. Yeah, beautiful disaster. I recommend you buy it or don't or buy it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks, Chris. That was so awesome, man. Hell I'm yeah. really stoked you're able to come out and share some of your DIY experience with us. And uh, yeah, man. Thanks uh, for having me, bro. It's all good. Absolutely, man. If you guys haven't seen Jones and Live, it's definitely something you guys got to go out and see and vibe with. And uh, it's a really fun time. So uh, yeah, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, do me a favor and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Leave me a comment if you like this podcast. I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks for listening.